James Barlow. Welcome to my show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, we had a conversation before we went on the air and I knew a lot about you from different people and researching your life and I'm just blown away. And I don't say that lightly and it's not an understatement, but you have this really hugely successful technology company in the in the cloud based services. Um, you can explain what your company does in a moment, but it just start. You started from nothing. You 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 started with humble beginnings, and um, now you have a company of over one hundred employees, and you keep growing like gangbusters. And uh, like a lot of successful people, I keep learning every day in America. You never. Well, you did make, go to college, but you didn't finish college. You don't even have an associate degree. So it's almost at this stage a badge of honor to say that to a lot of people. I can identify many successful people who never went to college, which is not to knock going to college. There is a critical place for education. But so so welcome again to my show. Um, tell me about yourself, how you got into this sweet spot and this great place. Absolutely. So, um, you know, I... I uh... As I, when I was younger, you know, I've always been interested in, in in computers. You know, I built my first computer when I was you know nine years old. Um, I my dad, you know, was introducing me to computers at, at very even even younger than that. Uh, so it, it's always the technology space has always been something that that's been uh very fascinating for me and and also something that I that I pick up on on quickly right um i've been entrepreneurial for 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 the bulk of my life um you know i had my my first business when i was like real business when i was 19 years old um you know i was an ebay power, power seller originally you know was doing consignment you know got got a bunch of people that wanted to sell stuff uh, and i took a percentage of it which was which, which was nice then i stumbled on you know um actually selling you know computer hardware so my main focus was was video cards uh and ended up crushing it and literally the more time that i spent uh the more money that i could make you know the possibilities honestly seemed endless and that got to a point um you know where uh again i i, I was i was doing around seven hundred thousand dollars in revenue a month on ebay as an as a you know, 19 year old probably 20 20 at this point and and um you know just watching the sales just come in left and right was able to master that so fast forward a bit um you know i i um you know spent before starting triumph tech uh, i was an independent contractor uh you know i was working predominantly with customers that were looking to work with amazon web services uh if they weren't i would convince them to work with amazon web services because that's what i knew best uh ultimately ended up working for another uh well for an aws partner you know who was doing kind of what 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 well, i'm not kind of but what what i'm doing today uh and that's where the idea you know to become an aws partner kind of you know it came from i saw well amazon sending him a ton of business and uh, he's able to charge these incredible bill rates where i'm charging half of that and and um decided to start triumph tech so uh, i called up my uh, one of my best friends who's now you know my my business partner as well has been bugging me to hmm. he was bugging me to do something with him for a while in this space he saw how successful i was as a as, as a consultant um where i was able to make seven figures as an independent you know like i was sharing during our, our talk earlier and and um you know i remember we we i i was sitting at my gym waiting for a class to start registered as an aws partner um and and the rest is kind of history you know and that that's what brought me to, to to where we we are today i have a lot that i can go into but i'll give you time to ask some questions and yeah uh, we've a lot to unpack but you are, are you were an ebay power seller that program is no longer there but i mean tell me a little bit about that uh, what did it take to be so successful as an eBay power seller. A lot of people over the years have dabbled in it, made a few dollars here, a few dollars there. Some got so frustrated, you know, they gave it up, others stuck it out, but it was just really kind of part-time work for, I think the vast majority of eBay users. Yeah, you know, I think uh, kind of finding a knack for 
Um, you know, keyword optimization was huge, right? You know, perfecting your listings, making sure that it looked good to, you know, a potential buyer. They were presented with all of the information they needed uh, in order to make a decision, staying competitive. Um, you know, that was that was a big part of it. I remember back in the day, you know, they used to have this this option called called featured listings and they may still have it. I haven't sold on eBay in many, many years, so it, it may still be an option. Uh, where essentially you pay fifty dollars and then they take you to the top of the search results, right? In that particular category for what you're trying to sell. So you're coming up first. So the people that had that featured listing was was that's who I would focus on for the products that I was trying to sell, you know, and and you know, making sure that I could source better prices than them. Uh, so you got to be competitive when it comes to price, um, you know, and then having the right keywords, uh, having some of those enhancements like the featured listing, uh, bold, you know, bold, bolding your listing again, anything you could do to kind of make yourself stand out, uh, even down to the port part where with featured images. I had featured images that were designed in a way to catch your eye, right? You know, so the colors that I used uh, were strategically chosen, right? So they would catch, you know, a buyer's eye. And as a result, um, you know, I was able to sell a lot of product. Um, so hopefully that, that yeah, answers no, it. Yeah, it, no, it's, it's quite amazing. I'm listening intently, big, trying to pick up some clues. Not that I will ever be a great eBay seller. I've never done much selling on ebay except maybe to pick up an item for our household so how many hours would you put into ebay during your career and um you know was it just complete dedication and paying attention because you seem to have identified ways to move the needle financially for yourself Correct. Yeah, I mean, it's it, I, I, you know, I, I equated the amount of money that I could make with the amount of time that I was willing to put in, right? The more time that I would spend, the more products I could put up, right? And essentially, the, the not essentially, then the more money I could make, right? So that was, that was the, the, the key. Uh, luckily, I was at an age where that was relatively easy for me to do. You know, I was 19, single, no family, really no no ties to anything. And I was just in my own world and, and, and doing my thing. So I would honestly probably spend, you know, 12 to 15 hours a day, um, you know, doing this. And, and, and that was, you know, kind of uh, a way for me to generate <laughs> at, at that age, a significant amount of revenue for myself, you know, and um, that was that was pretty nice. And also, you know, I'm making close to a half million dollars a year. I'm 19 and a half million dollars then is a lot different than what it is today. Yeah, but so with inflation. I, needless to say, I was I was I was doing OK. Right. Yeah. And, um, you know, that that was that was pretty nice. Um, there were certain seasons that were obviously, you know, um, bigger than, than others, like the holiday season. I remember I would just. I'd be be at uh you know um at my family's house for the holidays and I'm just looking at my phone and you know I'm just watching the dollars come in like every you know every minute just another sale and I'm like okay this is this is incredible so um I would do incredible yeah so so just just you know quickly the products you are moving through eBay were in the tech Correct. industry yeah, I was selling video cards. So, you know, uh, you know, um, gra graphics cards, um, kind of, you know, I'm sure you, you've heard of, you know, for today, especially GPUs, you know, I was selling them when essentially they, they, they first came on the scene. So fo focused on PC gamers, uh, for, for the most part, you know, that's, that's who was buying the, the bulk of my product. I had, I had relationships with manufacturers. I had relationships with wholesalers um, and was able to, you know, again, source, source the, the products and, and um, you know, uh, resell them on, on eBay for more. So. I'm wondering, did you have much competition in the space? Would that partly explain your success? Um. I mean, there was definitely competition. I wasn't the only one doing it, you know, and, and, you know, we would find, uh, the video cards that were obviously the, the most popular, right? You know, the people were, were buying the, the most of. Uh, I remember, again, like I said, I did a lot of research, keyword research, uh, competitive research. Um, and, you know, at any given time, there were at least seven or eight other people uh, that had um, featured listings like myself, you know, were, were optimized in a, in, a, in a similar way, you know. And, um, 
I would also find that, you know, it's, it's, uh, people would copy what I was doing and then I'd have to, you know, change things up a little bit, but, but yeah, I mean, even with the competition there, it seemed to like, you know, I, I, I had a way of bringing people to my listings and, and, um, always made sure that I had the best price, you know, before listing something would, would make sure that my price was good, even if it was a dollar less than someone else's, you know, and that would keep me at the, at the forefront. So you grew up in humble circumstances in Philadelphia. Um, you didn't have the um, proverbial uh, silver spoon by your side or in your mouth. And now today, by your own telling, you're a multimillionaire. Uh, someone who d doesn't have an associate's degree. And so you eventually moved from being that powerful eBay seller to having your own company today with over 100 employees Correct. and you're in your you know late 90s late 90s so <laughs> if you're in your late 90s you would be we great you're in your right. late 30s i, I, I apologize Correct. um tell us about that journey yeah i mean i i you know didn't grow up with you know i grew up you know probably low, lower middle class right you know i know that it's uh um you know my dad you know lived lived paycheck to paycheck. Uh, and that was, that was, that was our life. So, um, you know, I, 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 again, I've always had kind of a knack towards entrepreneurship, you know, even in my teens, I was selling on eBay, right. You know, I, I would, um, you know, it would be one off things, you know, here and there. Um, but I've always been very entrepreneurial. Like for example, I would go and, and, you know, a, a new gaming system comes out, uh, and then I'd be able to get that retail and then resell it for, you know, a, a profit. Right. Um, and, and, you know, th things like that. So I've always had a knack towards entrepreneurship. Um, you know, when I, I, uh, was, was, um, you know, at 19 again, I, 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 I went off to college, didn't really know what I wanted to do, but, um, I didn't have money like other people and, and other peers and, you know, and, and, um, so I needed to find a way to, to make money, you know, and I found that, you know, um, a lot of college kids didn't have money, so they would want to sell things, right? Which is why I got into consignment. I already knew how to sell on eBay. I already had the skills and would make money there. Um, and then ultimately, that led to me stumbling on, you know, well, let's sell, you know, graphics cards, right? You know, I, I, I saw a discrepancy between uh, not even a wholesaler at the time, but, you know, um, a, uh, um, you know, a, any, a retail provider called Newegg where I can buy a video card for, let's say, $120. And then, but I saw them selling on eBay for 160 And I'm like, well, let's, let's, let's take advantage of this. And then next thing you know, it's like built, built more relationships and, 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 and the rest is, is with, you know, manufacturers, wholesalers, you know, was able to increase the margins even more and, and, and the rest is history. But that's, that's a little bit about, kind of where 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 the entrepreneurial sparks started yeah but then t take us to your forming this company today yeah. from ebay to today's company where that fits in absolutely so I'll, I'll i'll fast forward you know between the ebay business i i did some other stuff which wasn't really um you know tech related i i ended up doing um you know, uh, uh, other types of work that aren't necessarily re relevant to tech right now. Um, and, and, uh, for example, you know, I was, was, you know, a, uh, par paralegal, uh, for years. I, 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 you know, I don't remember how, how that happened, but I ended up working for attorneys and, you know, I was independent working for multiple attorneys built up, you know, a, um, kind of a, uh, um, you know, a clientele, uh, and, and then found out, well, Hey, a lot of this stuff's just paperwork, right. You know, so it's like, um, I, I, um, you know, ended up helping, um, students, for example, you know, process expungements, you know, directly like pro se in their name, um, you know, for little things like just say disorderly conduct or whatever, they don't want their parents to know. I don't know. And, and I've always been entrepreneurial, right. Um, I ended up really teaching myself after that how the technology world right so i remember i would sit down you know on my laptop and i started playing with cloud computers you know i started um you know messing around with amazon web services and some other you know smaller cloud providers that, that you may or may not have heard of like digital ocean for example and i i became fascinated with this you know and i started deploying applications and 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 just you know playing with different technologies and 
I taught myself everything, kind of the foundation of what I'm doing today at scale. I then turned that into an independent consulting practice uh, where I was, you know, getting a lot of my business um, from, you know, freelance websites like Upwork, for example. Uh, and even there, you know, I, I went from the bottom to the top, right? You know, and, um, you know, I was top in all of the categories that I was, you know, uh, working in, um, which, which, which was awesome. But I remember the first, and this is interesting, the first like on, on Upwork, for example, getting the first couple of jobs is hard, right? You know, because you don't have any feedback, you don't have a reputation. But after you do that, you don't have to go out and look. They're going to find you. Like people are going to request you to do work for them. But I had to kind of beg for the first couple. I'm like, listen, I said, I can do this for you, right? I'm not even going to charge you anything. Uh, I'll charge you like a hundred bucks, right? Or whatever, something small. I just... You're getting lucky because, you know, I need to get the feedback and that's my goal here. And a couple people gave me a chance, gave me positive reviews and, and the rest even on Upwork was history, right? And um, fast forward a little bit there, um, I ended up doing work for another AWS partner who found me on Upwork um, and worked for, for them for probably the better part of a, a year, right? Um you know, while in the back of my mind, I'm like, well, I'm going to do this too. I'm just going to learn how it's done. And then I'm going to go off and, and kind of do this on my, on my own. So, and that's ultimately what gave me the idea to start Triumph Tech, which is now a premier tier AWS consulting partner, you know, and then we're winning all sorts of awards with AWS, you know, we're a strategic partner for them. Um, you know, I, I, I joke, you know, there's, there's thousands of partners out there, but there's, maybe four or five that really matter. Like we're in that top five, you know, in the segments that we play in. And, um, you know, it's been an, an incredible journey. You know, I have over a hundred employees now and and uh, things are uh, pretty wild. Sometimes I feel like I'm running a, you know, a high school, but that's, that's another <laughs> story. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sounds like your, your, your employees are young. Um, remind listeners of what AWS stands for. AWS stands for Amazon Web Services. So okay, most yep. will know, but it's good to spell that out. Absolutely. Um, so you have this big growing company. Your revenues are growing uh, rapidly each year. You've you've told me, um, and it's in a sort of a cloud based service. It's it's a lot more involved than that. But I want to talk about um, what is on everyone's mind uh, on Main Street and in tech streets, if you will, uh, AI. And we had chat GBT. And you know, there's a lot of wonderful things apparently promised by artificial intelligence, it's going to revolutionize our world, going to make things just gee whiz. And uh, we may not recognize the world. Um, you know, eventually, the, at the pace that AI is going, um, in the workplace and across many sectors. But there's a lot of fears about AI that we're rolling it out maybe too fast, that uh, there's ethical concerns. It could do really bad stuff. It could get into the hands of bad actors and it could create um, wreak, havoc, wreak havoc on humanity. What, what's your thoughts? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, it's funny now that all of this is in, in, in the mainstream, um, you know, but but I, I want to even, you know, go back a year, right, you know, uh, or even two years, right? There have been organizations, both nonprofits, you know, that have popped up, you know, uh, within the last couple of years, that their sole mission is AI ethics and AI safety, for example, right? You know, because they saw this as a problem, you know, before the rest of the world kind of caught on. So it's not anything new. Um, it is uh, that's one thing that I want to highlight here. But yeah, there are 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 all sorts of concerns. Um, you know, and 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 some of them valid, some of them maybe invalid, right? You know, and um, but. But um, when it comes to ethics, you know, for example, you know, like, um, you know, copyright infringement, plagiarism, you know, AI can now generate uh, music that sounds exactly like a popular artist, for example, and then somebody can go and, and maybe try to pass that off 
uh, as their own thing, right? You know, so that's that that's one thing. Uh, artwork, photography, um, you know, even even uh, you know uh, films, for example, these things can all be generated by by AI. You know, and if people don't acknowledge that this is not their work, yes, we are going to get into a problem. You know, with with, with some of those things. Um, you know, then there's the 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 concerns that you know we could use. Um, you know, AI can can be leveraged, um, you know, for things that are destructive to humanity. Let's just say, you know, warfare, for example, right? You know, and and that that can be dangerous if we're allowing a program, so to speak, to make decisions that can potentially kill a lot of people, right? You know, like that that that's that can be dangerous, right? So so we look at the things that can potentially go wrong, right? Like we need to put rules in place, stop gaps, you know, and, and um, measurements, legislation, et cetera, to stop these things from happening. But here's the deal, right? Um, you know, it, it's you and me, I, I can't go buy a weapon of mass destruction, right? Mm -hmm. I probably couldn't even make one because I can't get the materials, right? So for the bulk of, of, of humanity, we're not going to be able to get these things anyway. Um, and, and, you know, um, so I'm not terribly concerned, you know, that that this is going to really change that, like if people put put things together. Now, on the flip side, there's benefits, right, uh, to AI, you know, and, and our society. And I'll look at my my world, right, my my technology world, like my company and how we're using it to kind of to talk about that a bit. So we've all heard of ChatGPT. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think everybody's heard of ChatGPT. And their chat GPT is giving us the ability to do things faster, right? You know, it's able to generate um, code, for example, you know, uh, that we can use to deploy applications for customers, right? So our engineers are able to uh, come up with a solution faster because it'll kind of give them the foundation. Now, you still need the human element because each customer is going to want something, you know, unique to, to what their particular requirement is, but it's still nice to be able to have something to build that foundation with you. So now we can go ahead and, 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 you know, again, uh, beat timelines for customers come in under budget uh, and free up valuable engineering capacity for the next engagement, right. You know, um, and, and be able to do more as a result. So that's, that's one benefit. Uh, we've been using it with our HR function too, for example. So, you know, ChatGPT has given us the foundation for some incredible job descriptions for, you know, some some unique roles that we have, right? You know, and 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 the more detail you give ChatGPT, the better a response you're gonna get. Mm -hmm. um, so if you have a generic input, you're gonna get a kind of generic output. But if you're specific, you know, in what you're asking for, you're going to get a better response. So we've been able to even use it for building job descriptions, uh, for example. So that's just a couple of benefits of how we're using it. But I'll, I'll pause for a second and let you ask questions yeah. here. I'm curious to know a little bit more about you because you're fascinating. What are your influences? What influences you in life? And when you look around the world, is there anything in particular that you're drawn to in the world of art, culture, music, sports? and just daily life yeah i mean that's 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 a good question i i um you know i i i i i do you know i i love music um i i um i don't play music but you know i i do you know enjoy going to shows and, and things of that nature uh sports um you know i i definitely i, I like football i'm i'm a big uh I'm a big football fan. I'm a big Philadelphia <laughs> Eagles fan, uh, which is awesome, you know, and um, anytime that they're in New York, I'm at MetLife Stadium making sure to, to go to the game. It's a little bit of a haul for me to get to Philly right now. So, um, you know, that's that 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 could be difficult, but I do um, enjoy sports as well. I won't sit here and say I know every player's name and I can give you every stat, etc. But I definitely enjoy, you know, the, the competition. That's fantastic because I feel uh, company leaders have to have a, their arm around the, the world at large. You know, they have to be kind of aware, oh, there's a war going on in Ukraine, which is dreadful, obviously. We all hope it ends soon. And, you know, there are these cultural icons or there's this political debate going on. 
so that you can kind of synthesize that and it probably ultimately is reflected in your work or where you take the company even. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, you know, I definitely pay attention to the, you know, the geopolitical stuff that's happening around me. Um, you know, I, 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 uh, and I, I like watching the markets, but I also like understanding, you know, the influencers for the markets. Mm. Um, and, and that's something else that I, you know, I, I mean, I, there's not a day that goes by that I'm not, you know, pouring over CNBC, you know, um, and, and, and looking at the news, looking at the pro news, et cetera, uh, which also gives me, you know, an idea of what's, what's happening in, in, in the world around me. So I definitely would say that I, that I have my, my, my finger on the pulse in terms of, uh, what's happening. You've said that a lot of the employees and workers and professionals in your industry never went to college. They're self-taught. Explain that to me. I'm dumbfounded, but I've heard it before, but I, I, I don't understand that. Yeah, it's actually funny because I didn't realize this to be the case, you know, but, um, you know, some of our employees, you know, they're, they're former Amazon, for example. Uh, and I remember having a conversation with one of my employees, you know, and, and, you know, there was three people on the call with him. Uh, and three of us didn't have college degrees. He's like, I feel like the outlier here, you know, <laughs> and, and, um, you know, he, he highlighted, he's like, listen, at Amazon, he's like, I was the outlier there too. I'm like, why, why did I spend all this money on, on, on going to school? But yeah, I mean, it's, it's even this world that we're in with the cloud world right now, they don't teach this in college, right? You know, it's, and it, it's something, like I said, I was self-taught a lot of other engineers, you know, and, and architects, they're, they're, they're self-taught. Um, and that's kind of what, you know, makes an engineer really good at their job at, at, at the end of the day, right? Um, you know, because again, you're going to be presented with a different problem from each one of your customers, which is, you know, based off of what's their requirement, what's their business need right now, you know? And, you know, so what you build isn't necessarily going to be exactly like something else. So you need to have the ability to go and find documentation, you know, look at the the, the resources you have, uh, like um, Google, Stack Overflow, et cetera, to find answers to the problem you're trying to solve, or at least something to build off of. And that's why a lot of us end up, we teach ourselves things and that along with the natural curiosity to just want to learn, you know, there's all sorts of different technologies out there and services that, you know, Amazon Web Services offers, for example. I mean, hundreds of them, right? I like to just go and mess around with them and see what they do and see how I can make them work with other services, et cetera, you know, to understand kind of the lay of the land. And that's that that's what I think, at least in this world, leads to a lot of people not necessarily having degrees. Yeah, uh, so college has to catch up at the pace of developments, it feels to me, in our economy. I just can't see it ever happening, honestly. You know, it, it's, it's, you know, technology is, 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 you know, um, changing at such a rapid pace. Hmm. It would be impossible. Like, you'd have to have a new curriculum every semester. That's literally how fast that it's that it's changing, right? You know, and yeah, we could have the foundational stuff, but if, you know, if you want to be on the forefront, right, it's, um, they would have to change the way they're doing things. I mean, I'm not sure what kind of that, a message that is for um, students in college wondering, are they behind the proverbial curve um maybe some of what they're learning is going to be redundant and a total waste of time yeah i don't want to i don't want to say that because like to you know college ha has a place um you know and and there's a lot of you know fields that you you know can't get into without that degree right you know i just i guess for entrepreneurs you know, I, I would just say, go out there and, and do it, you know, and even for people that are interested in, 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 in the cloud space, like just go out there and, and do it, you know, and see if you have a knack for it, because you'll be able to get in. Um, and, uh, you know, that's that that's pretty exciting to me. Yeah, no, I, I agree. There is a there is a vital place for college third level education. Um, in America and across uh, around the world, um, no doubt about that. But it's become obviously very expensive. But that's a whole separate debate, and we would never knock college. Although there are a lot of reforms, I, I do believe are also needed. But maybe we'll come back to that some other 
occasion. Um, tell us a bit more about your company. You're growing. Uh, I know the revenue growth you shared with me earlier. That was just um, mind boggling. It, it, it's large. So where do you see it in a couple of years? Absolutely. Um, you know, I, I, I see, you know, it, I, we've been growing you know, 300 plus percent year, year over year, which which is incredible. This year, we won't grow at the same clip just because we've reached a point of scale where 300 percent just isn't realistic anymore. Yeah. Uh, but we will hit 150 percent, which is which is pretty exciting. So fast forward to maybe three years, um, you know, I, I would. First, I want to say I don't know if I want to run a company that's twice the size of the company that I'm that 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 we are right now, yeah. right? So that that's the first thing, right? You know, but if we continue at this pace, I would make sure to have the right people in place to be able to support that, right? You know, and I'll become more of a and I and I am I'm a builder, right? You know, I'm, I'm building an organization, uh, but I'd want to take a bit of a backseat and have you know essentially somebody else running it but you know we could easily two to three years from now triple if not quadruple uh in size and revenue which is which is pretty exciting you know there's so much work coming through in this in this this industry and and um you know it, it's not slowing down anytime soon and won't slow down within my career you know uh that that much i'll say um competition you know there's there's uh not many of us that that do this, you know, and 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 the bulk of us that are that are doing it, we're we're eating and we're eating well, um, which which is exciting. And again, I just see that accelerating and continuing to go upwards, um, and 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 not stopping for at least the next ten to fifteen years. And so that just to 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 be clear about it, the growth you were talking about that that refers to revenue. The three hundred percent, and then obviously not quite, not near that now, but still phenomenal to be sure. Correct. Um, yeah, revenue and headcount obviously has to scale with revenue too. So it's uh, you know you got to support the increase in sales with additional engineering capacity. Yeah, of course. Um, I want to ask you for your thoughts on the U.S. economy and where we're at in terms of our technological advantage, if that. Is the right way to describe it does does america have advantages on technology like we talk about manufacturing coming back to america we talk about the problems in america we talk about the ho hollowing out of the middle class because a lot of jobs are being outsourced i'm just trying to get a big picture from you an entrepreneur where you see all that america's edge if if you will in technology and in and in the jobs you know generally yeah. maybe I would definitely say that we have an edge on, on technology. So again, you look at the, the major cloud providers, they're all, you know, a, a, they're all based here. Yes, they're international corporations at this point, you know, but they're they're headquartered here in, in the US, right? Uh, we have a lot of incredible talent here. I feel like we're, we're more advanced when it comes to, um, you know, the, the um, you know the, the talent that we have when our, within our country and, and that other uh, other countries are now catching up, you know, um, at least from from an engineering perspective. Uh, so we look at, you know, uh, South America. Uh, you know, South America is awesome. It's in it's in the U.S. time zone, right? You know, it's in our time zones. Um, so you're not dealing with that, you know, time zone issue that you would be with, let's just say, the Philippines, Pakistan, you know, or other places that you might offshore talent. Uh, and there's really great engineering talent in South America um, that, you know, partners like myself um are 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 are, are using you know um and and we had great experiences so um we have a combination of of, of both i would say we're you know 80 percent you know north america based um canada is another place that we uh have have a presence as well um so obviously we have you know employees that are that are based out of canada but um yeah, I think between North and South America, like we we've been in a, in a in a pretty good position. So no, like I said, we do have employees that are again based in 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 South America. We have we have we have employees that are based in Canada uh, as well, um, and we also have some uh, employees that are that are overseas. But the bulk is again in, in North and North and South America. Um, now concentration, like I said, we're eighty percent 
US based, well, let's just say North America based, right? Um, and um, but we do, like I said, have you know talent everywhere else. So and most of your thing. employee, most what, of your what? employees are based in the US, and then you have uh, some working in South America and in different parts as well. Um, where you know, we, we hear um, constantly this cry for bringing jobs back to America or back to this, you know, bringing manufacturing back to America. And we had the CHIPS Act, of course, um, which is kind of unleashing um, some dynamics which may help in that direction. Your, your thoughts on that, that we, you know, should we keep jobs in America overall and, you know, maybe sort of look differently than we might have if you a generation ago at outsourcing yeah uh, so you know it, it it we we talked earlier that i think during our preliminary interview um you know kind of it you asked me if it was difficult to to hire right you know and and to be able to hire at scale you kind of need to open up your borders right mm -hmm. and 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 that's you know what gives you the ability to support at least in the services business you know where um you know, again, we're, 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 we have a lot, a lot of net new labels, right? So we need to be able to open up our borders and, and, and be able to get the talent we need. So what we've been doing, um, you know, for, for the most part, like a lot of our architect level, um, you know, roles are that they need to be based in North America. So these are the folks that are, you know, um, you know, uh, designing solutions for customers, leading a team of engineers to go and be hands on keys and, and doing the work uh, and, and really consulting with our customers. So that's, that's what we've been doing is keeping that level, uh, you know, in, in the U S uh, and then uh, we're a lot more open to, to bringing in, you know, the, um, the engineers from, from other parts of the world. So needless to say, that doesn't mean that, you know, somebody from, you know, Brazil or, or Guatemala can't be an architect, but I'm just letting you know, like, this is kind of the approach that we've been taking. Yeah. Um, Triumph Technology Solutions. Um, have you a, a special niche in your field? What distinguishes you from anybody else in the business? So I'll, I'll tell you uh, that we are one of AWS's only consulting partners, premier consulting partners that are, uh, is actively working with generative AI customers. So that's, that's, that's one thing, right? You know, um, another piece too, uh, is we have a niche working with media and entertainment, uh, based customers, uh, that, that kind of gives us a bit of an advantage when it comes to, um, those types of customers as well. Uh, but if I was going to pick, two things that that sets us apart from our competitors they would be it any thoughts on the u.s economy talk of recession uh, and all the other issues that are constantly in the news political strife um debt ceiling and too much consumer debt any thoughts and because you have a catboard seat as it were on where the economy may you may see some of those leading indicators softening here yeah. or spending there any view i'm on that? watching it very closely because obviously you know it impacts decisions we make as a business and and um you know i i am starting to see uh you know customers committing to engagements but delaying their start right not necessarily saying we're not going to do this but we're going to delay this because i think everybody is kind of you know in and just Let's sit and watch. Let's see what's happening here. I'm not sure where the economy is going to go, and I think we're all we're all feeling that. Um, again, you know, with our revenue numbers, we've been able to, you know, um, beat you know month over month what we were doing last year, uh, and and you know which which is exciting. Um, but I definitely would say that we're 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 um, feeling this. You know, if 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 the economy was in a perfect state right now. I would say we're going to grow 200 plus percent this year, whereas right now I'm saying we're going to hit 150. So um, that's that's you know def definitely starting to see it. So I do want to put that out there. James Barlow, this has been a far-reaching and um, really an incredible and interesting interview. I'd like to interview you again and maybe just see where you're at, maybe in a year or so. Sure. Um, on your different thoughts, if people want to get in touch with you, how do they do it? What's the best way? I would say LinkedIn uh, would be the best way to to to, to um 
get a hold of me and I will share that information with you. Um, so I, so that way you can, um, you, you, you can post it. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And the name of your company is Triumph Technology yep. Solutions and you have your own website. Correct. Triumphtech.com. James Barlow. Thank you for being my guest. Yep. Thank you. Appreciate you having me. You are listening to Dig Life Deep with John Aiden Byrne. You can reach the host in the U.S. at 973-529-4699. That's 973-529-4699. 973-529-4699. Email burndesk at gmail.com. That's burndesk, B-Y-R-N-E, desk at gmail.com. Burndesk at gmail.com. Subscribe for free.